On behalf of the Board of Directors and the staff of the Foundation, welcome to our Capstone Summit, Your Experience, Our Story. We are very proud to be here today at this milestone event for the Foundation as we share our story with you. And it's invigorating for us on many fronts. First, it is our 20th anniversary, and we want to recognize those who are key to our past and current work for their advice, ideas, and support the foundation is where it is today because of your help. It marks the end of our second strategic plan as a think tank, focused on listening to and learning from Ontario's patients and caregivers. And it opens another chapter for us, the start of a new strategic plan, which you'll be hearing about this afternoon. It also marks an opportunity to reflect on what we've learned to date, the aha moments and the course corrections. We want to share with you what we think we got right, and what we didn't. My job this morning is to uh, spend a few minutes just talking about uh, the Change Foundation's history and uh, some of the highlights of our uh, anniversary. For those of you who may not be familiar, the Foundation was actually established in 1995 by the Ontario Hospital Association with a mandate to promote, support, and improve health and the delivery of health care in Ontario. And from 1995 to 2006, it was a granting agency funding policy and research uh, work and undertaking study, study tours and, and education events. In 2007, we rebranded as a policy think tank focused on changing the healthcare debate, healthcare practice, and the healthcare experience in Ontario. We've been very lucky to have visionary leadership. If I could get the slide to advance, which it's not. Sorry, I don't know why that's not working. There we go. Um, Gail Murray, who was the inaugural CEO and was with the foundation for the first uh, nine years of its life, and all of the individuals listed there are, uh, been, we've been very fortunate to have very, very skilled board chairs. So if we think about healthcare then and now, to go back to 1995, the Ministry of Health budget was a mere $17.5 billion. In 2015, it's well over 50. You may recall we still had district health councils. We had the OCTRF, the Ontario Cancer Treatment and Research Foundation. We did not have LINs. We did not have CCACs. We did not have health care or health quality Ontario. We did not have cancer care Ontario. And we didn't have family health teams. So some evidence that the healthcare system actually can change over a period of 20 years. In that earlier period, um, we actually granted a total number of 81 grants with over six and a half million dollars of foundation money and with matching grants well over 15 million with 203 uh, grant partners. And over the 20 years, we've had a number of highlights which are in the timeline that is outside uh, and will also be up on our website soon. But I wanted to just highlight a couple of things that some of you may um, actually remember. Sorry, I'm having trouble with this clicker this morning. So just a few things to, to take a quick glance at. Management of emergency stroke care was a project we did with the Heart and Stroke Foundation, which actually led to an Ontario stroke strategy. The wait time project at Kingston General Hospital created an online wait times management system, which was actually commercialized and sold uh, off to a, a company. OnGene was an online resource center for genetic services, which became a prototype for a national resource center. The infection control training post the SARS uh, crisis was a program that became endorsed by the Infection Prevention Agency of Canada. Colorectal screening in Ontario, it changed screening policy in Ontario and led to a province-wide program now run from CCO. The Ottawa model for smoking cessation expanded to more than just hospitals, and both programs, the hospital-based and others, are still very much in existence today. The Strategic Alliance with Healthcare Technology and Place program at U of T was a research and training initiative that was established and, again, still exists today. And research on home care clients with heart failure contributed to the Cardiac Care Network strategy for community management of heart failure. So clearly some projects that had an impact on the system. But in 2007, after 10 years of, of funding grants, we took a serious look at what we were doing and decided to rebrand as a think tank, focused on integrated deliver delivery models of care as the LINs were now in our system. But we realized pretty soon that something was missing. We did not have the voice of the patients. 
And so we conducted focus groups with patients and their family members to hear about what their experience was like as they tried to use the healthcare system in Ontario. And it was here that we started thinking about this idea of navigation and the fact that it was so difficult for people to move from their primary care practice to hospital and back to home. And it was actually a woman in one of our focus groups who came up with this notion of the puzzle maker. She was talking about how difficult it was to manage the care for her mother and that she was confused as to who was really trying to put all of the pieces together. So, a new strategic plan, hearing the stories, changing the story, which really committed us to a new goal of improving the patient and caregiver experience as people move in and out of the system. And those quotes, again, are from people that we talked to in our focus groups. So now that we were a little bit more clear about what we wanted to do, we went around the province. We had regional sessions in six different locations with seniors and, and their family members recruited through local healthcare organizations to really get into an in-depth understanding of what their experience was. We heard very similar themes in all parts of the province. They had significant difficulty in transitioning between healthcare providers and services. Their family members were not often considered or accommodated in care planning conversations. There was a bit of a lack of communication between the various providers that they were, they were seeing, and in particular, a strong feeling that their primary care practitioners were not in the loop. So then we got to work, and we designed two big initiatives. The PATH project, which you're going to hear about as soon as I sit down, and the Panorama team, who you'll hear about uh, later today. We also kept working behind the scenes to produce useful, we hope, useful policy and research reports, and we branded our two exchanges, the Hot Talks on Health and Meeting of the Minds. Hot Talks on Health is a short sort of afternoon lecture, and Meeting of the Minds is a one-day closed-door session where we try to tackle really difficult questions. Lastly, for those of you who were not in the audience last night, we also launched our 20 Faces of Change campaign, probably one of the most wonderful uh, initiatives that the Foundation has taken on. And I want to just acknowledge the people uh, that were recognized last night. Patricia McKay, who was a patient advisor at North York General, the St. Joe's Healthcare Hamilton Integrated Comprehensive Care Team, which has now led to a province-wide initiative on integrated funding, Patients Canada, a national patients organization, the Shergwin family and Tamara Dubé Clark, who shared the story of Andy, uh, a loved one with, uh, with Alzheimer's disease, and Ed Kucharski, a fantastic physician at the Sherburne Health Center, who's going out and working with street populations for screening. Come on, there we go. Patricia Catton uh, and uh, Audrey Jusko Friedman, who run a wonderful program at UHN for cancer survivors. Eleanor Rivoire, an inspirational nursing leader, unfortunately now retired at Kingston General Hospital. The Ottawa Regional Cancer Foundation and Linda Egan, who work with cancer patients. The South, Southeast Toronto Family Health Team, and in particular, Dr. Tia Flam. Partners in Care Roadmap Strategy, also at UHN. Stacey Dobbs, CEO of the Toronto Central CCAC. Toronto East General Hospital for a series of very inspiring patient videos that they've done. Crystal Chin, a young patient advocate and just an amazing young woman. Renal patient website team at London Health Sciences Centre who worked directly with patients to create information that helped them. Holland Blurview, client and family centred care sim development team. And there's one more. The Northumberland Path Project, and I need to point out that the Change Foundation had nothing to do with the selection of any of the winners. We had a completely independent committee, although we did have our fingers crossed, but we didn't select them. Sarah Sharkani, another amazing young woman who is a family caregiver and has founded a, a new uh, family caregivers organization. Jessica Saunders, client uh, relations coordinator at St. Joe's Care Group in the North, where she has worked with patients directly to help improve the care and the culture in the hospital. Mount Sinai Hospital Acute Care for Elders or the ACE Strategy, the Patients Advisory Council uh, at the Northeast Toronto Health Link. So I'm going to end now um, with the cover of our new strategic plan, which is where we are going to head next. It's a bit of a natural evolution from our patient experience work. 
It's a new focus for us on the role of family caregivers. As we listened to patients and their families, it became very obvious to us that the vital role of families as part of a care team was not as acknowledged as much as it should be, and we'd like to do something about that. And I will talk a little bit more about that later this afternoon.